do you want to quit your job and go do busy again? I, I don't want to get in trouble with Rob or anything. <laughs> Well, funny enough, you know, it's like it's such a cool idea that I truly feel like a, it could launch today. As I understand it, you guys provide capital and also resources to to these folks. And by resources, that could be just teaching entrepreneurial principles to, to folks. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's correct. Tell me one question that no one ever asks and you're either glad that they don't or you secretly wish that they would. I would love for people to ask me more about like the tangible things that I do to get into alignment. People don't necessarily need to be saved. Uh, people need knowledge of their own light and how to access it. And so that is at the core of our mission in the sense that we are able to, you know, identify underrepresented, historically underrepresented entrepreneurs and understand the fact that the best entrepreneurs are those who overcome adversity, those who are resilient. Welcome to Unlocking News, where we want to cover those key pivotal moments and decision points that really change the lives of successful entrepreneurs and leaders. And I want to hear stories, because I think we learn the most from stories, but not just the glory stories. I want to hear the gory stories, because as I like to say, the bigger the shit show, the bigger the lesson. Today, I've got on Unlocking Moves, Charles Choice, and we've got a few surprises for you on today's episode. But Charles, before we get going, I like to hit my guests up with an off-the-wall question or comment to really keep them on their toes, keep my audience on their toes. You ready for this? I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. So when we met a few months ago, you shared with me a story about uh, someone suggested that you reconnect with a long-lost friend after four years. That friend turned out to be your wife. So, so that's a great story. We can all say, hey, that, that's awesome. Congrats. The story gets kind of weird when you think about the person who recommended you reconnect was a psychic and it was a chance encounter. She mentioned a grandmother that's now deceased or then deceased in Mali. Wow. You got to tell me more about that story, dude. Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, thank you for having me here. Um, it's a pleasure to be able to just share my story. Yeah, I've always been a spiritual person. I've always believed in, you know, a higher power, but I would say this is the most explicit evidence that I've ever experienced, um, you know, of that. And so, yeah, just to, you know, to what you were saying, she approached her on the street um, and this was during a very significant time in her life um, and basically delivered a message um, from her then deceased grandmother, you know, that was very specific, something that only she would know. And then she combined it with this information that I, even though we haven't spoken in four years, still thought about her for every single day. And, you know, that, that that's something that she, you know, she then reached out to me out of the blue. She actually reached out to me on her 30th birthday, right? After us not speaking for four years. And, you know, when I saw it, obviously I was just, you know, I was, I was in awe and, you know, I validated everything that she said. Um, and in addition to that, uh, she followed up with the woman, uh, this is during COVID too, right? So this is in the age of, um, you know, like Zoom meetings, right? So, so, you know, Zoom meetings are recorded or can be recorded. And so she recorded that whole interaction, uh, the subsequent interaction, and, and in that um, conversation, she went to further detail around my life. She said that I was surrounded by kids every day, which she had no knowledge of the fact that I was currently running a whole charter school um, and, you know, like with 400 students. And so there are a lot of details that were just very, very, you know, spot on. And so, you know, as you mentioned, we were really close friends. We were best friends back in the day. And so, you know, we pretty much just picked up where we where we left off at that point. Um, and it was just undeniable that we we had to we had to really honor that and reconnect. Wow. And so as I understand it, she is now your wife and that brought you to L.A. So talk about the amazing uh, storyline there. So we're going to get into that and more. As you guys can tell, I've got Charles Choice as my guest today on Unlocking Moves. Charles is the director of Rob Deerdeck's Do or Die or Visionary Foundation. We're going to talk a lot about that. He started his career at J.P. Morgan Chase in uh, the technology group. He left to pursue his own entrepreneurial dreams. 
Then he later was the global exp expansion lead at WeWork back in their heyday back in 2015. He's got a degree from Lehigh University. But listen, those are the headlines. Today, we're going to get into between the lines. So Charles Joyce, welcome to Unlocking Moves. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Awesome. So I was trying to think about where to start. And I know there's a lot we can get into because there's a lot in between the lines in, in your background. But let's start with the Do or Die or Visionary Foundation. For those of my viewers who don't know, that is Rob Deerdeck's foundation. And um, Rob Deerdeck is famous for uh, uh, MTV reality and variety shows, including one called Ridiculousness. And um, the mission for the foundation is we strive to empower underrepresented and underestimated entrepreneurs to unlock their full potential. So tell me more, because I know a lot of your background ties into that. So tell me more about the foundation and how you got there. For sure. So I guess to begin with, um, one of my core beliefs that I think has guided me throughout my entire career is the notion that people don't necessarily need to be saved. Uh, people need knowledge of their own light and how to access it. And so that is at the core of our mission in the sense that we are able to you know, identify underrepresented, historically underrepresented entrepreneurs and understand the fact that the best entrepreneurs are those who overcome adversity, those who are resilient. Um, and, you know, it's just a matter of giving people the opportunity to try. Right. And so, you know, I, I have some experience working in tech uh, as, a, as a founder. Um, and I, you know, I, I thought about, you know, the fact that a lot of entrepreneurs, they get started before seed round with friends and family round. Right. But, you know, where I'm from, a lot of times people don't really have friends and family that could that could. Uh, you know, give significant capital at the earliest stages, right? Also, you know, the best entrepreneurs are those who have, um, you know, who have failed before, right? Um, you know, like a lot of people invest in those who, um, you know, it's not their first venture, right? But if you don't have the opportunity to try um, on the front end, then, you know, you're sort of stuck and you tend to just go towards what's safe or what's conventional, right? Um, and so, with our foundation, um, we have uh, we've worked specifically with other nonprofits that are aligned to that mission, right? So we're talking about people who have been formerly incarcerated. Um, we're talking about young people, high school students um, who are in under-resourced communities, um, and we've been able to identify a ton of other nonprofits that you know, are already doing this amazing work. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be a part of several boards that work in this space. And so, yeah, it's it's been a huge blessing to be able to enhance their impact and their mission with our work. Man, I love it. So I want to touch on a couple of things, but let me ask you a clarifying question first. As I understand it, you guys provide capital and also resources to, to these folks. And by resources, that could be just teaching entrepreneurial principles to, to folks. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's correct. Um, you know, because a lot of it is just mindset, unlocking an entrepreneurial mindset. And, you know, a lot of these are it's intangibles that aren't necessarily taught in, in school or like conventional um, school settings. Um, so an example of that is uh, one of the organizations that we support, the five ventures. Um, they work with uh, people who are currently incarcerated and formerly incarcerated. So a couple of weeks ago, um, I had the privilege of going to one of their sites at a state prison in California, and we led a whole day of workshops um, going over everything from them, like just sharing concepts for their businesses to figuring out the best way for them to tell their story, to structure their resume, um, and really just unlocking, you know, an entrepreneurial mindset so that they could take it with them, you know, upon release. And the same thing applies in many other settings too, for the, for the people that we work with. Well, I want my audience to really understand what you're talking about. We're talking about not a handout where we're giving them something, uh, necessarily, we're teaching them how to uh, become entrepreneurs so they can earn their own way out, right? They can make money to to get out. And that's one of my lifelong missions at this point is capitalism for good. If I can teach you some entrepreneurial principles, then, then I don't have to you know, have a, a nonprofit provide for you all the time if I can teach you those principles. That's awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so, and I, as I understand it, or, or just knowing from our conversations that this has a tremendous impact on you personally because of your own challenges trying to raise capital as a young black man in, I think you were in the Bronx at the time, or maybe it was Philly. 
and un- unable to raise enough money for your own tech startup, which we're going to get into because it's a badass idea. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm excited to share a little bit more about that. I'm from the Bronx originally, but yeah, that's correct. I actually, um, my my business partner and I, a good friend of mine, we actually moved out to Philly to to start the the venture ourselves. Okay. Well, I can see why it's so this cause that you're uh, embarking upon now or that you're undertaking is um, very personal for you as well. So that that makes you a better leader because you have that passion behind it. It's not just a job. Let's talk a little bit more about your journey. So as I mentioned, you were at JP Morgan Chase, which is a great headline. Uh, you were at WeWork, which is a great headline, or at least it was a great headline. Uh, you had to start up in between. Somehow you ended up in California. We talked about that through the psychic, but somehow you ended up at the Do or Die or Visionary Foundation. Tell me that story. If you're just joining us on Unlocking Moves, today's episode is brought to you as usual by Hire Better, the strategic talent partner for growth-minded entrepreneurs everywhere. So I feel like every experience that I had, I was in the exact right place at the right time. And, you know, I I feel really, really blessed to have experienced um, a wide variety of, you know, industries and roles that all sort of intersect with this current um, opportunity with the foundation. And so um, I think to truly be able to honor the story and the path, I would actually have to start in college um, where, you know, I um, actually I landed an internship uh, my sophomore year at J.P. Morgan. And I remember a huge, uh, a huge challenge uh, being where I would like land my my major, right? And so at the time, I you know I think I had the mindset that okay, I need to be a business major if I wanted to go into a career for business. But I noticed that I gravitated naturally to a lot of the liberal arts, specifically English classes, right? And so that I think that was the first time that I actually went against the grain and decided to become an English major with the understanding that, okay, like if I truly commit myself to networking with the right people and carving my own path, that I could get to where I needed to be or where I wanted to be. And so with that, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to uh, maintain the internship and get an offer, um, you know, while being transparent with where, with what I was studying um, at the time. And, you know, that served me well. And I picked up a ton of skills. I'm really grateful for those experiences. And, you know, after a few years of, of being within that role. I hey, took hey the, let me pause there for a second, if you don't mind, Charles. And that is, I want to make sure my audience heard that, especially my younger audience who's out seeking their first or second you know, job opportunity. Your college degree is interesting. And that's oftentimes your first foundation for your first job. But really, what happens next is up to you. And for you, you learn the power of the network and and it's not just what you know, it's who you know. And so you leverage that. You also uh, sought other opportunities outside of your major, which more align with your passions. And so I I would encourage our first time job seekers, especially leverage your network and and, uh, seek those types of things, which are going to lay the foundation for your, for what you envision for your future. Absolutely. And to stamp that, um, you know, like no one ever tells you to go to a career fair. No one tells you to send cold emails. Um, No one tells you to, you know, apply to be a leader of a club. These are decisions that you have to make on your own. Um, And, you know, they they definitely serve you. Right. Because that first job that you land is not the first thing on your resume. It's you know, it's also it's the result of, you know, a series of other decisions that you made up to that point. So that's absolutely correct. All right. So thank you for that. So when you first learned about the Do or Die or Visionary Foundation opportunity, you did something. Tell me what happened next because I love this story. Yes. So when I first heard about the opportunity, um, it was actually pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting too, because, you know, like as we talked about in the uh, previously, um, you know, I I reconnected with my, with my wife and uh, came out to, to Southern California um, after, you know, after my previous role, uh, and we can talk a little bit more about that, but I was running a charter school at the time in Brooklyn. Hey, hey real quick, let me ask you, was this around the time of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Because I'm getting a little Philly to LA kind of vibe. Is that, <laughs> no? <laughs> Funny enough, so on a side note, um, my first year in LA, I had a 
fresh Prince of Bel Air themed birthday. <laughs> Um, moving yeah, from, from the east to the west, we actually had a party in Bel Air. That might be another story for another day. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, somehow like those those seeds were planted, I guess, from all the episodes. that I watched. Uh, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Go ahead. No, it's all good. Um, yeah, I, I came out to, to L.A. and, you know, after making a, a tough decision to, you know, to to leave a role that I was really invested in. Um, my wife actually advised me to not just apply to any random jobs, not to like to be very intentional with the next role that I would take on. So actually took a few months to not apply to anything. Like I went into deep reflection and meditation, thinking about what I, who I wanted to be right before what I wanted to do. Right. Um, yeah, I'm a firm believer in understanding like the sequence of like, first you need to be before you do, then you could have the things that you want. Right. And so after three months, um, I came across a role. I actually saw it on LinkedIn um, and it's pretty vague. Right. But it was um, in regards to uh, Rob Deerdeck's venture creation studio. He wanted to create the philanthropic arm of that. Um, and it was just it was for uh, like a, a program officer role. Right. And so, you know, I applied. I did an initial screening for it, but then went the extra mile of visualizing and really just conceiving, okay, like how can this be structured and what can we do with this? Right. And so within the next couple of days, like I pulled a couple of all nighters and created a full out deck. Um, just like, you know, just slide by slide, just explaining the vision for the things that we can create the various programs that we could run. Um, and that deck got forwarded to Rob while he was on vacation. He, opens the email on a beach somewhere, responds immediately. And then a couple of days later, I'm talking face to face um, to him on, on Zoom. And funny enough, the first 10 minutes of that conversation was this story of how I got to LA. So that's how we first connected. Wow. So I want to touch on a couple of things there. First of all, you didn't just jump at a job because you needed a job or even apply to jobs because you needed a job. You wanted to do some soul searching to find out who you wanted to be versus what you wanted to do. That is the sound clip. I love it. That is amazing advice for all job seekers earlier in your career or later in your career. You then took some time to meditate and really pray and be spiritual about what you want, uh, what you wanted to uh, ultimately end up doing with your career. And then you were, uh, I'm not sure what the word I'm looking for, but you were, you were thoughtful. You weren't just willy nilly. You were very thoughtful about it. And then lastly, you went not just the extra mile, you went the extra thousand miles pulling together a, a slide deck to show the foundation what they could be with your guidance and assistance. That is powerful, Charles. Powerful. Yes, yes. Um, it's it, it's definitely the one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, and I felt really, really compelled. You know, the more that I spoke to Rob and spoke to the people at Deer Deck Machine. Um, and, you know, it assured me that I was actually, once again, in the right place at the right time, right? Um, luck is when preparation meets opportunity, right? And so fortunate enough for me, you know, that that all aligns at that moment. So that's one of the foundations of unlocking moves is I want other folks to be inspired by the stories of folks like Charles Joyce, that it is not just a chance interaction. It is when you're prepared and you're do, going the extra mile and you seize that opportunity. So many people would see a job offering for uh, for the foundation and either just randomly apply, maybe not even change the, the 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 verbiage of what they applied to the last job with, right? And you you actually went the extra mile, and so that means you you chased your dream, and, and that's where the unlocking move is for for you. Just, just going a little bit further, I know you said in the past when in our discussions that uh, you believed in manifesting the job that you wanted and also that there's no chance meeting, meaning, meaning that the ultimate meeting you had here was was ordained perhaps, and maybe because of the meditation and whatnot you did prior to that dis that discussion. Yeah, that, that's absolutely correct. Um, I'm also a believer in the, in, in the notion that everything that you're seeking is seeking you in return, right? And so to be fair on the other side of things, right, that LinkedIn job uh, post says actually it was live for like six months prior to me applying, right? And so I think that speaks to, you know, Rob and his team about um, them being very intentional with, you know, the the people that they that they hire, um, that they bring onto the team. And so, you know, I, 
And it's funny, I think like Rob, like as I mentioned, when we spoke uh, for the first time, we really just connected on a human level. Um, and, you know, it became clear to me that he was very intentional um, with the decisions that he was making. So it's, uh, yeah, it's everything you're seeking is, is seeking you in return. Man, uh, that's as I become more aware and more, I have a, a mindset of, of around uh, clarity and uh, abundance and awareness. Uh, that all speaks to me, and I hope it speaks to our audience as well. There's another uh, thing that I wanted to add in here. You've mentioned the, one of your frameworks when you think about big decisions or career ch choices is is around this concept. It's a Japanese concept called ikigai. Ikigai, I think is how you pronounce it. I K I G A I. For those of uh, my listeners who aren't aware with it, uh, tell me a little bit about that. As I understand it, it's something around your your reason for being or your purpose. Yes, yes, that's correct. So. Um, Ikigai, your reason for being, um, in a nutshell, um, it's the intersection between four things, what you're good at, what you love, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for. And it's, you know, ever evolving, right? Your Ikigai today um, will likely look different from, you know, 10 years from now, or even two years from now, right? But I've come to find that when you're able to find a role or just, you know, a, a mission that's in the perfect, you know, center of those four things, then you are typically happy. Um, you feel fulfilled, you know, you feel like you're living in your purpose. And so, yeah, that's, that's really works wonders for me. And that, that's something that I share with everyone close to me, everyone who's sort of in a career transition to find something that's within those four things. And don't be afraid to, um, you know, hold fast until you, until that, that comes across your path. I love it. I'm going to add that to my framework. When I work with a lot of executives in transition, I get a lot of calls from people who, you know, their son or daughter are looking for their first job. Icky guy is uh, going to be one of my my go-to is I'm going to do some more research on that too. Hey, let me ask you one more question on this because I know it's 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 a powerful transition and it, it probably relates to some of what we talked about. So as I understand it, you were at WeWork in 2015 and things were blowing up. They were going crazy, like growing, cool. good, good way of blowing up. Yeah. And you were uh, traveling a lot to New York and London and whatever. You were a global expansion lead. And there's something that gave you a sense of uncertainty. And as you described it to me, it was your one of the real opportunities for you to trust your gut and your instinct uh, in something like this. Tell me more about that and and uh, just really about trusting your gut. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I will begin by saying that I really, really, really enjoyed my, my time there. Um, I feel like I came into the role um, not really truly understanding the scope of it, um, but just an excitement for the mission, like what the company represented um, and the impact that it had on, you know, the future of work and workspaces. And so I came into to the organization, um, you know, as an expansion lead, um, primarily focused in London before coming back to New York. And, you know, I picked up a ton. That was my first real immersion in a sales, um, sales um, oriented role. And you know, I saw firsthand just how it was thriving, like all the cool cultural elements, um, you know, that that the company had. Um, but, you know, I had a little um, uncertainty by just like the sustainability of how, you know, of how long it would last. Um, and it was one of those things where I had to really trust my gut and my instinct and see, you know, sort of what was happening around me. Um, and understanding that I may very well be walking away from such an amazing opportunity. However, um, I feel like when you're grounded in what your values are um, and like what you actually want for yourself, you know, you could always use that as a guiding star so that you're, you're, you never feel like you made the wrong, wrong decision. And so, you know, with that, um, you know, I, yeah, I chose to, I chose to, to step away um, and find something that's more in alignment with my icky guy. And at that time, actually, you know, I stepped away with nothing lined up, right? But another chance encounter happened, right? Where I bumped into an old colleague of mine who at the time was looking to launch uh, some after school programs in the city. She had just got a, a grant from the mayor's office um, to launch after school programs. And I had a passion for youth development um, and giving back to my community. And so, you know, 
it was literally like the next day after I, I put in notice that I was leaving. Um, you know, then like before I knew it, I, I was running an after school program in the Bronx and then we expanded and went to Brooklyn. Um, and that sort of set the precedent for my future role as direct operations at a major charter school network. Man, that's, that's awesome. And it's not, I would say that's not luck. As you said, that's, uh, that's, it's fate. It's preordained. There's, there's definitely a, a lot going on there in the, in the universe. And I love the, the spirituality component of our discussion today. Beautiful. Yes. It's a, my wife calls it DST, divine standard timing. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So I, I, I was, I'm not sure if, how deep I want to go in this next part. Cause I don't know how much time we have left to be honest, but I want to, I want to ask. So when you, Left J.P. Morgan Chase. You you started a couple of things, and they're both real freaking cool. One in particular, I wanted I want to dive into because it's super cool. So one of your startups was Ricochet New York, which was uh, you uh, organized events for travelers visiting New York who wanted an authentic cultural experience. People are doing that in, in other ways these days, which is great, but cool idea and cool concept. You also organized pub crawls for New York tours. That's really yeah. cool. But where I want to go is one called Vizzy and yes. V-I-Z-Y. And as I understand it, you were uh, like almost geolocation type things of, of old, maybe old buildings. And the, the phrase that really caught my eye was, what if the walls could talk? And so all the visitors would, would add something to, the, to, the, um, to that physical piece. This was 2012, well before like all the geolocation and QR codes and all the stuff we have now. Do you want to quit your job and go do busy again? I don't want to get in trouble with Rob or anything. <laughs> well, funny enough, you know, it's like it's such a cool idea that I truly feel like a, it could launch today, you know, and, and you know, could take off. Right. But, you know, I think it was one of those things that I we were doing it at the time and it gave us a ton of experience and exposure. Um, and, you know, things don't always play out the way that you envision it. Right. But, you know, there's a, a wealth of knowledge that that we all gained from that experience. My my co-founders and I, um, I'm very happy with what I am. And I feel like, you know, we're just at the earliest stages of what's going to be around for, you know, God knows how long. Right. Hopefully centuries. Seriously. Um, but, you know, it, it's a it's a really cool idea. Nonetheless, uh, maybe I'll inspire someone within my network, you know, to to take it and run with it. Um, but yeah, it was really cool. Basically, essentially uh, what it was, was uh, it was a, an app that allowed people to leave behind digital content in physical locations, right? So we love the idea of geo storing content as opposed to geo tagging it. So people would be discovering it when they're at a physical location. Very cool. I love it. Well, I don't want to get in trouble with uh, with Rod, who introduced me, or Rob, who you work with, and his friend of Rod. So we'll, we'll, we'll maybe we'll cut all that out of the show. <laughs> Not really. It's all good. It's all good. All right. So hey, we're at the uh, part of the show where I want to talk about your unlocking move and or moves. There's there's often a few, and obviously we've talked a little bit about some of them. Tell me which ones uh, jump out at you, and you want to add some more color to. Yeah. Um. And correct me if I'm wrong, right? But I think the first thing that comes to mind, right, is so I believe that people either act out of love or they're out of fear, right? And, you know, even at the earliest stages in college, right? Like I still, you know, I had an experience, you know, all, all, all the things that I, I spoke about. But I think at the core, um, the decision to always act or consciously act out of love. Um, I think a lot of times when we play it safe, right? Out of fear of falling short, a failure um, or not having the things that we want to have, that's when we're often misguided um, or just not living up to our potential, right? But when we operate out of a vibration of love and abundance and gratitude, that's when we're, you know, we're, we're steered in the, that, that, the right direction. That's when we manifest magic, you know, and that's when the things work out the way they need to work out, right? And, you know, going back to the whole divine standard timing thing, right? It may not necessarily be what you initially envision, but it's actually what you need to get from that particular moment and experience. That's very, very powerful. So even if things don't work out the way you envision it, they're working out the way really the universe or your God or whatever you believe in ordains it. Yes. And that's because you're grounded in your values of who you want to be. Right. And so I think a lot of times we focus 
we, we we tend as humans to focus on the things that we want to have and then we start doing things you know to have those things and then you know so we could ultimately be the person that we think that we would respect of ourselves but that's actually the reverse order so that that, that i would say that was my unlocking move uh if that counts that Level is deep now what drew you to that what caused you to to shift your mind if if it did to be more in line with love and abundance versus fear and whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I would have to give credit to, to my family, my support system around me. Um, you know, I grew up in the church. Right. And so I think that regardless of what your faith is. Right. Because I think at the core of it all. Right. There's this um, reverence towards love. Right. And gratitude. Right. And I think like regardless of what you're, you know, subscribed to, that is that's critical. That's something that you can't find any replacement for, right? Um, because once you're conscious of, you know, the abundance that you have, um, you know, you'll naturally start being conscious of the other things that that are coming your way. Um, and you'll start attracting those things. So it's, it's a universal law, to be honest. Man. I, I'll tell you, there's a Charles Choice is a badass. And there's a reason Rob Deerdeck responded to your, uh, your note on vacation in Hawaii. He wanted you working with the foundation and uh, you're a badass, man. Thank you, man. I really appreciate those words. I'm fortunate to be here. So are you, Kurt. You're you're doing amazing things. And, you know, I, I love your book. Um, love this podcast. So I'm really grateful to be part of it. Awesome. Well, listen, I, I consider myself the listener's advocate. And if I've got Charles Choice right here and I can ask him anything, what would I want that to be? So let me ask you the, the other one that I really thought of during our discussion, and that is, let me start with a comment. You guys are impacting lives in amazing ways at the foundation with what you're doing. Tell me one of your favorite success stories. So one of the things that we did actually in the first year uh, that we launched was we um, we decided that we wanted to have um, uh, like supplemental programs to uh, like the programming that our nonprofit partner partners had. And so with one of those programs, basically what we did was we asked people to submit videos of their their life vision and also their business vision um, and how it's all aligned. And, you know, we got some really cool, um, some really cool entries with that. But one person stands out. Her name is Carol. Um, she, you know, she had she had spent time within the criminal justice system. But since, you know, she got out and she. Uh, created a meatball catering company, right? And, you know, with that, she, um, you know, she presented her idea. Um, and at the time, like it hadn't really materialized, right? And she ended up winning, right? She ended up winning the grand prize, which was like $10,000. Um, and I remember the day that I responded to her, she actually told me like, wow, like I actually was about to give up before, I received this funding, right? And then I checked back in with her a couple of weeks later and she was on local delivery apps uh, in Southern California. And so to me, that was just a great example of her being in alignment with her divine timing, um, not giving up, being resilient. Um, and, you know, the, the, you know, the, the capital that we were able to give her like significantly altered her trajectory as an entrepreneur. And so like that, that's to me just, the exact reason why we do this work. Let's go. Hey, shout out to Carol. Can we share her name of her company? Maybe we'll get her a few more customers. For sure. Um, I would, I'm not sure if she sense pivoted with the name and I don't want to, I don't want to butcher the name. Right. But right. yeah, I, I could definitely follow up with you and then give you the, the details on that. We're going to get that in the show notes for sure. I, I appreciate that, that story. Okay. So I've got one last trick question for you. Tell me one question that no one ever asks and you're either uh, glad that they don't, or you secretly wish that they would. I would love for people to ask me more about like the tangible things that I do to get into alignment, um, you know, specifically around like spiritual practice, gratitude practice. Um, it may come across weird, right? But I swear by it um, because there are some times where we, you know, life, you know, just comes at us and we're dealing with a ton of problems and we just feel out of whack. We feel out of alignment, you know, not really up for it. And I like to think of tangible ways to sort of just like get back into that alignment and that rhythm. And one of the things that I do uh, is this thing called uh, a stream of consciousness gratitude walk, right? 
And what that is, um, it started when I was working at uh, the charter school, you know, 15 minutes going for a walk and, you know, it could be any place. Um, and during that time, you're thinking of things that you're grateful for, right? And you're not allowed to stop. You're not allowed to repeat anything, right? And what you come to realize is like, there's infinite things to be grateful for. And I've noticed that it actually just resets my energy completely. Um, and so that's something that, yeah, I would love for people to, to ask about because a lot of times these things just seem like sort of in the air and intangible, but, you know, you can apply real tangible systems to, to you know, accessing this, these type of things. Man, thank you for sharing. And let, tell me what other, what are the other top two tips? So if I have three tips, one is a 15 minute gratitude walk, which, and, and just for my listeners, gratitude can be more than just, you know, thankful for my health. You can be thankful for the bees and the great green grass and the sunshine. You can be grateful for a thousand things in a 15 minute walk. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You can be grateful to walk, right? Like I actually, I tore both of my Achilles in the past two years, right? So like, I don't even take walking for granted, right? Like that was a really, really hard journey. But um, yeah, those are the type of things. What else? Uh, I think when you're, when you're connecting with people, no matter who they are, right? You want to make sure that you're giving them, you know, your presence, um, your energy and the respect, right? I, I love to treat everybody with the same level of respect, whether they're, you know, top level executive or, you know, someone who I've never met before, who I feel like there's no sort of gain to be made, right? Because, you know, working with teachers, especially, especially um, I realized that, you know, the um, your impact you know, as, you know, a person uh, on this earth, like can't really be measured. Like there's no, there's no end to it really. Right. Like I, I may have said something to someone in my past that stuck with them, um, that they go on to teach, you know, a ton of other people. Right. So I think giving everyone, you know, respect, love, and, you know, your presence is, is key, you know, it's just to live in that way. Man, that sounds so simple and so powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Super simple. <laughs> hey, Charles, wh what? where can we find out more information about you or the foundation? Yeah, for sure. Um, so if you go to deerdeckmachine.com, uh, you can find us there. Um, about me um, on uh, you know, Instagram, uh, I'm Chuck Chillery. So that's C-H-U-C-K-C-H-I-L-L-E-R-Y. Um, yeah, I've been posting content on there. Uh, the same thing applies to Twitter as well. So, you know, right. where to find me. Chuck Chillery has got a little bit of a Prince of, of uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air ring to it. So we'll come back He's to there. that. Well, in where, in where we started. Hey, on that note, we're going to wrap this puppy up. Uh, Charles, thanks so much for joining me. For all of you out there, please go like and subscribe. Give us a five star review for Unlocking Moves. We are uh, making great progress. We appreciate your support. And um, please uh, go check us out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, all the stuff. So Charles, man, thanks again for a great conversation, man. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Be well. Let's go. If you're an entrepreneur and you think you might have outgrown a member of your team, or maybe you've got a mic, as we talked about in Who's Your Mic, check out this quiz at whosyourmic.com slash quiz. That's whosyourmic.com slash quiz.